Hey everyone, welcome to George's Library. Today's book will be The Silver Chair by C.S. Lewis. So, this is the sixth book in the Chronicles of Narnia series, and the events take place several years after the events in The Voyage of the Dawn Trader. The book feels different in many ways. For once, this is the first time in a long time throughout the series wherein the Pevensies are no longer the main protagonists. Jill and Eustace are being transported back to Narnia while running away from bullies at their new school, only to find themselves entrusted by Aslan to find King Caspian's lost son, Prince Rillian, who was lost for years. King Caspian is now very old of age and has been looking for his son for many, many years. They suspect his disappearance is related to a mysterious witch that is dressed in green and has the ability to transform into a serpent. The children team up with a new creature called a Marsh Wiggle that goes by the name of Puddlegum, and they set out on their quest. The one thing that stands out in terms of narrative is the point of view of the characters. Instead of jumping from one point of view to another as previously, when the Pevensies were the protagonists, Lewis decides to show us only Jill's point of view. This makes a great difference in the tone of the story, but I'm not sure if necessarily in a good way. Jill is introduced to us for the first time in this novel, and is very different from Susan and Lucy. Some reviewers pointed out that this was Lewis's first attempt at a three-dimensional female character. Therefore, I can see his experiments. He tried to make a character that is likable and also not without flaws. But the one thing I couldn't stop noticing throughout is that Jill doesn't really have a character arc. I could not see any major transformation on her at the end of the book. It's like none of the events had any kind of impact on her and she just drifted away through the adventure, waiting to be over and to return home. Eustace, on the other hand, had a huge transformation in the previous book. He was introduced to us at the beginning of the book as a slightly negative character, only to become a strong, confident and kind character by the end. He had a fully developed character arc that went from point A to point B in reaction to the events that stumbled upon him throughout the way. This sort of character arc was unexistent with Jill. As for the third main character, Puddlegum is a frog-like creature with long arms and long legs. The Marsh Wiggles are melancholic creatures by nature, so they always expect the worst in, in anything be it person or be it situation. Puddlegum is considered an outsider. His people criticize him for not taking life seriously enough. He accepts to join the children on their journey in order to find the melancholy within. But he turns out to be the wisest and funniest of the characters and gives us the most beautiful speech in the series that also sums up the themes of this novel. One word, ma'am, he said, coming back from the fire, limping because of the pain. One word. All you've been saying is quite right. I shouldn't wonder. I'm a chap who always likes to know the worst and then put the best face I can on it. So I won't deny any of what you said. But there's one thing more to be said even so. Suppose we have only dreamed or made up all those things. Trees and grass and sun and moon and stars and Aslan himself. Suppose we have. Then all I can say is that, in that case, the made up things seem a good deal more important than the real ones. Suppose this black pit of a kingdom of yours is the only world. Well, it strikes me as a pretty poor one. And that's a funny thing when you come to think of it. We're just babies making up a game, if you're right. But four babies playing a game can make a play world which licks your real world hollow. That's why I'm going to stand by the play world. I'm on Aslan's side even if there isn't any Aslan to lead it. I'm going to live as like a Narnian as I can even if there isn't any Narnia. So, thanking you kindly for our supper, if these two gentlemen and the young lady are ready, we're leaving your court at once and setting on in the dark to spend our lives looking for the overland. Not that our lives will be very long, I should think. But that's a small loss if the world is dull a place as you say. The silver chair felt more layered and with more depth than the previous books in the series. This is a story about hope and about finding your way out of darkness by following the small glitters of light ahead of you no matter how small they are. This is what I wish for all of you. Don't stop following what you believe in, and don't give up on hope. The signs we were given are uncertain, and the light seems dim just ahead. But perhaps if we just keep on going, then we might find Narnia at the end. I want to thank all of you for your support. I've managed to reach 100 subscribers this week. It's a great achievement. I'm very happy that people are sharing and checking out my stuff. 
It gives me great joy to share with you the stories that I read and I do my best to always grow and to always do better content with each review. I'm hoping to succeed in that further on. I'm looking forward to see you next time with The Last Battle, that being the last book in the Chronicles of Narnia series. If you want to keep up with my next reviews, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. And uh, I wish you a great day, a great week, and keep on reading. See you next time.